In today's episode, we're going to be removing some struts in preparation to get some coil overs on. Let's do it! First step is to loosen off the lug nuts. Then by jacking up the car on an appropriate point, lower the car onto some axle stands. Make sure the car is safe and secure and it's not going to fall over by giving it a good shake. Then remove the wheels. Alright cool, so I've got the head torch out. Uh, so as you can see, here is your strut suspension with the wheel off and everything. So the first thing we're going to be tackling is uh, this brake line here. We're going to be, there's a, a tab underneath it which you need to push out. Uh, once that comes out you have to then wiggle this, give it some good bit of lubrication and all that and it will eventually come out. Then after that we're going to tackle the anti-roll bar which is behind here which you can't see currently, I'll get a good picture of that. Uh, it's best off taking it off from the bottom link just because it's far far easier uh, that's why you need the replacement ones we're going to be tackling these two bolts there which you do have to take this caliper off just to get uh, the bolts out of the way but I mean it gives you a good chance to actually give everything a good clean in there and everything like that so it's ready and your pads give them a good like see if they're alright and if they're wearing okay um, yeah I'm going to go ahead and do that Alright, so best thing to do uh, right now would be to spray every single component that you're going to be working on with some kind of penetrating oil. So we're going to be taking them off, spray that a good bit. I'll do the anti-roll bar link. Just gives it a chance to kind of soak. And whilst you're here as well, around the back here you'll have your tying rod. You might as well start, like, just wire brushing that as well just because it helps people when they come to uh, to do your alignment it's already moving well it'll be closer to moving anyways and also give this a good wire brushing as well and fire loads and loads of penetrating oil down there just means that when you come to bleed the brakes earlier later on you'll have it half ready so I'm gonna go tackle this guy now oh don't forget your banjo bolt which is down here, out of the way. What also might help is if you put keys in the steering wheel, it means you get to turn this wheel, uh, your keys in the ignition, sorry, and uh, just take off the lock, which I, I'm going to go do right now, because I completely forgot about it. So, no. so, you need to get the wire brush on that guy. Obviously, if you're from like America or something, this will probably come straight out because you don't have any salt on the roads because it doesn't really snow over there. It depends what parts of America you're from, though, but yeah. Blast some penetrated oil. Best way I've found to get these out is to lightly tap it because they might go wiggle up and down. Just try to wiggle it out. There you go. See, it's starting to crack there. And it's loose. So, we need to clean this banjo bolt up. There's going to be two copper washers on this, or one. For some reason, the backs only have one. On mine, anyways, that is. You gotta want to keep a hold of them, because they stop everything from leaking. So we'll give this a massive clean up. One so sh stuff doesn't fall into the actual caliper and block the whole system up. And two, because you need to get a bolt uh, socket on the end of that. Right, for once you're happy with this, try to see if you can get a, nut, uh, a socket on it. And, um,. Once you can, you then need to clamp your brake hose somewhere up the line. So get yourself a brake hose clamp kit. Or if you're cheap like me, 
I use a pair of mole grips and I get two bits of plastic on the other ends on the ends of it just so it doesn't hurt the actual pipe itself and then clamp it up the line somewhere There you go, clamp to brake lines so a little less fluid is going to come out when we take off that banjo bolt. This is not a good idea, but it works. Just like everything else I do. Now, when you take this off, just watch your legs because it will just spray a shit ton of brake fluid everywhere. So get something ready to catch that. Make sure you've got something that will clean the brake fluid off all the metal parts because it will just um, destroy it. Proceed to wiggle the brake line for the hole in the strut. Once it has been taken out, reattach the brake line to the caliper via the banjo bolt. Ensure this has went back in its hole, this little bent bit of pipe. Remember to spray this down with water, just so the brake fluid doesn't eat it. Okay, so th this is the lower half of the ball joint. You can take it off from the top point and then reuse it, but uh, the case I had the last time was I couldn't get it off on the top, so I've just bought new ones and uh, I mean, it's an upgrade again. So we're gonna go for the lower ball, jo uh, ball joint, uh, anti-roll bar. So the best way to attack these is that you're meant to have a you might be able to get like a spanner on here and then uh, an allen key on the back end and like you put an allen key in and that stops that from spinning but that just doesn't work especially if your car is from the UK or anywhere that rusts like it's just it's just impossible so obviously the best thing to do is give it a good cleaning first but uh, the way I've only been able to get these off and this is the reason why I can't get the top one off because I was able to reuse the old the old ones in the back, but not these ones. Um, was by using mole grips again. Um, handy. Just get them in behind the bar. Slot them in. Get them nice and tight. You will probably rip your boot. This is why you need to really replace them on all of them, but if you're lucky enough, you might be able to keep your old ones. Get it nice and tight on, so it doesn't go anywhere. And then get your spanner on them, or your wrench, or whatever you're using. What you also might be better doing is if you're doing the lower ones, you might be better coming in from the other direction, underneath the car. So that's on pretty tight. Uh, that's just why they're a major to get off. So I'm going to get the breaker bar on it, funny enough. And after all that, in half an hour's work, the bolt falls off. Got the bugger off. Right. 
Christ, that took a lot longer than it needed to. More grips off, as you can see. That's just gonna fell out because the other side's jacked up. Makes it a lot easier for this boy to come out. Right, so the next two bolts you're gonna have to worry about now. So as we've got the hardest ones off. Those two hards, there, the brake line and the anti-roll bar. They're the two hardest ones. So you're gonna have a little breather right now. So if you're like me, you're probably a bit ticked off with it. Um, so we need to clean up these bolts. Make sure we can get the 90 mil on. The other two were 14 mils for bread and post production. It has to say that. All right, so I cleaned up a few of the bolts, but I'm gonna need to take the caliper off. So I'll quickly show you how to do that. Oh, it's not very comfy sitting here. So 14 mil. And another 14 mil. Seems to be the majority of stuff on this car is, you guessed it, 14 mil. You got a bolt here at the top for the slide pin. Shouldn't be that top. Gonna get in the right angle on it. Get one lower as well. There we go. You want to grab a pry bar or a really long screwdriver, twist the whole thing to assembly to you if it makes it easier. By pulling the caliper towards you, this pushes the pistons back and allows you to remove the caliper. Now you can either just take the top one out, slide it out like that and leave it hanging there. Or if you're me, it's a good time to clean up your slide pins. Gonna hang this up somewhere. I'm gonna go hang mine up on top of there. Put these bolts back in just so I know where they are. So these slide pins should be moving freely. In the case of this. Oh, yep, that moved. <laughs> See what I've used on this. I think I've used petroleum grease. That's correct. That's why that came out so easily. This one. It's got stuck to it. Uh, classic times of copper grease. Yeah. I'm gonna take that off. Then I'm gonna clean that up. So you can see a better view and angle of everything. Here's the bolts I just took off to take the caliper off. These are the slide pins. That one's pretty good. This one's a little bit stuck. Then um, carrier bolts are up here, and then there's this guy here. Just take them off, it means you can clean out everything pretty good, but uh, I'm actually kind of happy with how much movement's in this front caliper here, so I'm just going to leave it. Put this caliper, try not to twist the actual brake line itself. going to have to find a place for it where it's going to sit and stay. That should do, just got to keep a member when I go to move this again. As you see with the caliper off, there is so much more room. Using the wiggle technique, wiggle it on a little bit, give the bolt a nice good clean, just the amount of rust, it builds up like a second coat on it almost. It does come off. Now, you can try if you're a ratchet, but I don't think you'll get it off. Because these are tight. Especially if they've been on there for a while. So, what I'm gonna do, get old me old chum. There we go. Cracked off, you can see how much rubbish just came off of that. I'll do the same for this guy here. Yeah! There we go. Give him another twist. This is literally just due to rust. And now I'm just going to stick a spanner on the other side. You can just use your 
a ratchet, but I like quickness. There we go, finally, the Ryobi has got it off. This one will just probably slide out. One of them will slide out and then the other will be a pain. Just make sure to keep everything together. To aid getting this guy off, he might be stuck in there quite nicely. You see he's getting stuck down in there. Grab your ratchet. Just give him, in fact, sometimes you don't even need the ratchet. Give him a little spin and a push and it just encourages them to come out. And he's out. Just like that. Right, before I pull this all out, I'm going to twist it back. So I'll zoom you back out. You can twist this so it's flat. And give it a good wiggle. And then it's out. That's that bit. So this shock is free. And by the looks of it, my strip top mount is also knackered on this side. Make sure that caliper's going nowhere before you go and attend to the top. Alright, so I'm just going to point to everything and show you what you got to do here now because I, I need to be in the spot where the camera is. Um, so you need to take these four bolts off, which are either 13 or 14. It's 14. So, loosen them up. And whilst you get to the last one, grab the shock to start, stop it from falling. And then take it all out. Well, no shock here, but that is absolutely knackered. Look how much movement is in that. Yep, that's a goner. When I was turning left to right, I could just hear a big old crunch. And I mean, that just absolutely explains everything. Absolutely done. In the next part, I'll be showing you how to roughly set up your coilovers and install them.